Hello and let us start our session about the channel estimation techniques and diversity in the wireless communication and I am the presenter this is Suvarna Kadam. So let us talk first about channel estimation techniques and diversity in the wireless communication. When we talk about the channel estimation techniques and the diversity we first talk about the equalization then we'll talk about the diversity and then we'll talk about the channel coding. So we'll discuss each and every term in a detail. So to have a channel estimation techniques and the diversity in the wireless communication, we must understand here what is the concept of equalization. Then we'll move towards the diversity and then we talk about the channel coding. So let us start our session uh, with introduction of all these three parameters. First, we have to or we can say that these three techniques can be used independently or you can use this technique simultaneously to improve the received signal quality. So this technique suggests to improve whatever you are getting in a better way. Now the next one first we'll talk about the equalization. So equalization compensates the inter-symbol interference created by multipath within time dispersive channels. So if the modulation bandwidth exceeds the coherent bandwidth of the radio channel ISI occurs and modulation pulses are spread in time. An equalizer within a receiver compensates for the average range of the expected channel amplitude and delay characteristics. So equalizers must be adaptive since the channel is generally unknown and time varying. So you don't know at what time what kind of spreading will be there hence your equalizers must be adaptive in nature. Now we'll talk about the equalizers and the categorization of the equalizer. So if you broadly categorize your equalizer, equalizers are divided into two types. One is the linear equalizer and other one is the non-linear equalizer. So in the non-linear equalizer, again, you are having different uh, subtypes that is DFE, then ML symbol detector and MLSE. Okay, we'll talk about this one one by one. So right now we are Understand this is the DFE, this is the ML maximum likelihood symbol detector, maximum likelihood you can say uh, symbol estimator like that. Okay? Then when I talk about the linear, another subtypes are traversal and a lattice. So these are the structures of that particular equalizer. So based on the structure, the categorization of linear equalizer is done as a transversal and the lattice equalizer. Then here in the DFE, you are having a transversal kind of the structure and a lattice kind of the structure. Again, in the ML symbol detector and the maximum likelihood symbol estimator, you are having a transversal channel estimator. So these are the structures. And the below line, you will find the algorithms which are used to implement these structures. One is the zero forcing, LMS, RLS, fast RLS, square root RLS. Whereas in the LATIC, you're going for a gradient RLS. Then here for traversal, again, you will see the same kind of things is repeated. LMS, RLS, fast RLS, square root RLS. Just the zero forcing is not there. Okay. Then the same is here in the LATIC, gradient RLS. Then traversal, the ML symbol detector, again, the same kind of things are repeated over here. LMS, RLS and fast RLS, square root RLS. We are not at all interested in very much details of this particular equalizer. You just right now understand there are the types of equalizers, a linear, non-linear, then traversal and a lattice. Okay, these are the base, based on the structure. Now we'll talk how this particular traversal equalizer looks like. So this is nothing but a traversal equalizer, and this is the structure of linear transversal equalizer. So transversal equalizer can be written as a function of the delay operator that is exponential of minus j omega t s. This is the symbol duration or z raised to minus one. So if input signal goes to this one, this will provide a delay of you can say one symbol duration this is two symbol duration and so on okay so if and all these symbols will be collected together now you will have this kind of a structure to understand or to get a reliable output or to get a maximum output now this will be the threshold detector each and every symbol will go here and the maximum or you can say the best will be chosen out of that one okay input signal delayed one again delayed one again delayed one and that kind of things will be there okay so if you are providing the delay you will get a previous symbol or you can say the delayed version of that particular and best one will be chosen here and this is nothing but the concept of this transversal equalizers 
this is nothing but the lattic equalizer if you see the structure of the lattic equalizer you will find uh, you can have this kind of the things over here uh, i can see uh, your y is given here and this is f1 of k and this will be this structure will be lattic this is the delay provided and then you are just combining that with the previous one and that one okay so this is the structure as is the structure looks like a lattic it will be called as the lattic equalizer okay next one is nothing but the non linear equalizers we were talking about the linear equalizer non linear equalizers are used in the applications where the channel distortion is too severe for a linear equalizer to handle so the linear equalizers do not perform on the channel which have a deep spectral nulls in the Part band, and that's why we are moving towards this non-linear equalization. So, in an attempt to compensate for the distortion, the linear equalizer places too much gain in the vicinity of the spectral noise, thereby enhancing the noise presence in those frequencies. So, three very effective non-linear methods have been developed, which offers improvement over the linear equalization technique. One is the DFE, that is decision feedback equalization, which we have seen previously. Second is the maximum likelihood symbol detection. And third one is nothing but the maximum likelihood sequence estimation, that is MLSE. So these are the three, you can say, non-linear methods which are using to implement non-linear equalization. So we'll see one by one. Decision feedback equalization. So you can see here is the input signal. Then you are having a feed forward filter that is FFF and you are providing suppose this is your output. The feedback is given to again to that particular estimator and then output is defined and that's why decision feedback equalizer the output will be based on the feedback which is received to this particular adder. And that's why the output will be better than the linear equalizers. The second is nothing but the decision feedback equalization. So if I draw the block diagram of the same structure which I have seen right now. So if you'll see here, you are having your input signal, feed forward filter, then uh, your feedback filter. So feedback filter output will be given again. So here input or feedback should be output. So decision device will take a decision which one is the good or reliable output and then decision will be taken that this should be selected so the probably best or better output will be chosen over here so next one is nothing but the maximum likelihood sequence estimated estimation that is mls equalizer so you can see here you are having a channel output here then you are having a tab over here again the feedback will be given to the channel estimator channel estimator will estimate the, ch the output and will be given uh, uh, to this particular adder and the, whatever input comes the relay will be provided again that output will be given to the channel estimator and channel estimator again gives that to the maximum likelihood symbol estimator and estimated data sequence will be taken out so whatever output or whatever received signal will be there that will be chosen based or that will be processed in such a way that the best output output is chosen for the reception. Next one is nothing but the comparison of various algorithms of adaptive equalization. If you will see here algorithms, here is LMS gradient, so DFE, so low computational complexity, simple program, disadvantages, slow conversions, poor tracking, Kalman RLS, this is a fast conversions, good tracking ability, high computation complexity, FTF, fast conversions, proof tracking, low computational complexity. This is the complex programming and unstable. Gradient lattic, stable, low computation complexity, flexible structure. Performance not as good as RLS, complex programming. Gradient lattic DFE, so you can see low computational complexity, complex programming. Fast Kalman DFE can be used for DFE, fast conversions and good tracking. Complex programming, computational, not low and unstable. Square root RLS, here you will see better numerical properties, high computational complexity. So these are nothing but the some advantages and disadvantages of the algorithms which we are using for adaptive equalization. Now we are moving towards a very interesting part and that is nothing but the diversity. So diversity is another technique used to compensate for fading channel impairments and is usually implemented by using two or more receiving antennas. So as with an equalizer, the quality of mobile communication link is improved without increasing the transmitted power or bandwidth. Here, 
while equalization is used to counter the effect of time dispersion that is inter symbol interference diversity usually employed to reduce the depth and duration of the fades experienced by the receiver in the flat fading that is narrow band channel so diversity techniques can be employed at both base station and mobile receiver so we'll categorize this diversity techniques so diversity techniques are divided into four major categories spatial diversity antenna polarization diversity frequency diversity and a time diversity we'll see one by one what is a spatial diversity now here in this particular diversity you're using a multiple antenna and they are strategically placed and connected to a common receiving system while one antenna sees a signal null one of the other antenna may see the signal peak the receiver is able to select the antenna with the best signal at that time or at any time antenna polarization diversity in this particular diversity multiple versions of the signal are transmitted and received by our antennas with a different polarization like vertical polarization horizontal polarization in a both way you are transmitting the signal receiving with the both polarization a diversity combining technique is applied on the receiver side now frequency diversity frequency diversity allows the transmission of the same message signal at a different carrier frequencies in order for the received signal to be statistically independent or at least uncorrelated the carrier frequencies must have a separation that is greater than the coherence bandwidth of the radio channel so you use two different frequencies for the same signal different carriers but there must be a sufficient gap between the two frequencies to avoid the in your, your inter frequency or carrier interference or you can say interference between them time diversity multiple versions of the same signals are transmitted at a different time instance you are transmitting the same signal at time t1 then the same is transmitted at t2 and so on okay and the best will be chosen at the receiver side now we'll talk about the space diversity in like detail selection diversity feedback diversity maximum ratio combining equal gain diversity these are nothing but as uh, you can see here these are nothing but the types of your space diversity now in the diversity i think we have already talked about the diversity here channel coding now we'll talk about the channel coding what is the channel coding Chan we, we were talking uh, about the equalizer then we have talked about the diversity now we are going to talk about the channel coding channel coding improves mobile communication link performance by adding redundant data bits in the transmitted message so at the baseband portion of the transmitter a channel coder maps a digital message sequence into another specific code sequence containing a greater number of bits than the originally contain in the message so the coded message is then modulated for transmission in the wireless channel now channel coding is used by the receiver to detect or correct some of the errors introduced by the channel in a particular sequence or a message bit now because decoding is performed after the demodulation portion of the receiver coding can be considered to be a post detection technique post demodulation Now the adic coding bits lowers the raw data bit transmission rate through the channel. Means it expands the occupied bandwidth for a particular message data rate. Okay. So if I uh, broadly categorize my channel coding, one is the block code, another one is nothing but the convolutional codes. So let us see, uh, uh, or let us introduce all these things. What are the block codes and what are the convolutional codes? So I'll start with block codes. so first thing which i'll discuss is nothing but the block codes block codes are forward error correction that is fec codes that enables a limited number of errors to be detected and corrected without retransmission block codes can be used to improve the performance of the communication system when other means of improvement such as increasing transmitting power or using more sophisticated demodulators are impractical in block codes parity bits are added two blocks of messages if you are having message bits some parity bits will get added to make code word or code blocks that's why it is known as the block codes so in a block encoder k information bits bits are encoded in n code bits because you are adding some parity bits so k plus that parity bits they will be encoded in the n number of code bits a total of n minus k redundant bits are added to the k information bits 
for the purpose of detecting and correcting errors. The block code is referred to as an N, comma K codes. N is nothing but the total. Uh, you can so um, uh, and K is nothing but the information. Okay. So N is total number of bits. And the rate of code is defined as R C K by N and is equal to the rate of information divided by the cross channel rate. Now block codes. So Hamming codes. These are nothing but the some examples or these are nothing but the types of the block codes. Hamming code, Hadamard code, Gole code, cyclic code, and BCH codes. This is also known as the Reed Solomon codes. So this is all about the block codes. Let us talk about the convolutional codes. Convolutional codes are fundamentally different from the block codes in that information segments are not grouped into distinct block and encoded ठीक है यहाँ पे आप क्या करते थे distinct distinct block में उसको convert किया यहाँ पे नहीं होता instead of continuous sequence of information bits is mapped into continuous sequence of encoder output bits this mapping is highly structured enabling a decoding method considerably different from that of the block codes to be employed a convolution code is generated by passing the information signal through a finite state of shift register. So if you see here, you are having this encoded sequence. The data bits goes here. Then there are n stage that some a particular code is again given here, and that's one, two, and such n number of codes gets generated. So k data bits are converted into n number of total codes. So this is all about the channel estimation techniques and diversity reception. We have talked about equalizers. We have talked about diversity reception, and then we have talked about the uh, uh, coding of the signal or coding of that particular uh, channel. So we'll stop here. Thank you.